at Labor Day. I would like a holiday week celebrated. Uh, the next upcoming holiday, not um, that you have to off for school for it, but does anybody know what's coming up next? Okay. Halloween, yeah. You guys like Halloween? Yeah. You guys dress up for something that's scarier or something that you really like that's going to be popular on the TV?
and always bring to you our words of praise and thanks because we know that you are always watching over us. You're caring for us even when we don't realize it or even when we forget that you're there. So we come to you in worship knowing that you are Lord of all. You brought us through another week with all of the ups and downs and whether we were on the mountaintop or in the valley, you never left us. So we know that when we prayed, you heard every word and you continue to work your perfect will. We're thankful for all those prayers that you answered and the ones that you are still answering today where we still have the names of so many who are in need as you have heard. Our primary prayer, of course, is for those who are spiritually lost. We know those who have never invited you into their life as Savior and Lord. And we have family and friends who fall into the category of being a prodigal son or daughter. They have drifted away from being in the center of your will. We have our never-ending prayer list of those who are in physical need. Some are in the nursing home. Some have been in the hospital. And many are still at home. And our prayer list gets longer as we listen to the news about our beloved denomination. For we have even in positions of leadership those who are trying to change the truth of your word. We live in a nation that is living so far away from being one nation under God. Many gods are being worshipped. Your word says a house divided cannot stand for very long, so we pray. We pray for our divided church. We pray for our divided country again today. And we pray that you would help us individually to be faithful to the truth of your word. For we are responsible for the way we live our life. Help us to spend as much time in your scripture as we do listening to the news on any given day. Because we know that our God is good. We know that our God is still working in this messed up world. We know there is so much hate and violence. So much poverty and hunger. And if we listen to most of the news media today, we will get depressed and discouraged. So enable us to spend more time with your good news. The good news that is being preached today throughout the world, that no matter what we have thought, said, or done this past week, that was contrary to your will for our life, if we confess, you will forgive. That because believers will again be sharing their faith today, people uh, who were spiritually lost are going to be saved. The church will continue to meet all kinds of needs today. Through the church, people will be fed physically, Folks in the hospital will be visited and uplifted through prayer. Your word will be preached and will touch someone's life and bring them closer to you. Moms and dads will take the children to church where they will learn more about your will for their life. Some people who have been lonely through the week will have the joy of being in worship with family and friends. And when worship is over, your church uh, who has those individual believers who continue to be your witness in their homes and where they work. And in spite of all of the bad news, that will be heard. There will be a whole lot of good news and good things happening that may not make the news, but will change someone's life for the better. So help us, Lord, to be as the individual and as the church to be faithful to what you're calling us to do. Continue to teach us how we should be praying. As we pray together, the model of prayer that you gave the disciples so long ago, you said, when you pray, use this model and pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and your daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of God today for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to begin by asking you, how adventurous are you? When you go on a vacation or when you take a trip, do you plan out every detail or do you fly by the seat of your pants? I had a family in one of my churches who went to Ocean City, Maryland every year for vacation. Mom and dad, the two kids, uh, went with grandma and grandpa and some other siblings. Mom had a sheet of paper for each car. They would start from her house at a designated time. They would drive according to her plan to Breezewood. They would stop there to get some breakfast, have a pit stop, and then be on their way. But when they were on their way, they changed cars so different people were riding with different people than they started out with. They would stop for gas later and they would switch again. And at the end of her trip, everyone had gotten <coughs> in a different car with a different part of the family. She had it planned out when they got to Ocean City, they would check in. At a certain time, they would go to dinner at a certain place. Most people I know don't plan that much in detail. But there's also another side to all of that. I read that there is a travel company called Black Tomato. And they will offer you what they call a get lost vacation for a large sum of money that you pay to Black Tomato. They will send you to a surprise location. Could be in the wilderness, could be in the desert. You are to arrive at the airport. Someone from their group will meet you there. At that moment, they'll give you information about your trip. They'll give you a cell phone. They'll give you some survival gear. And after your surprise vacation is over, it's up to you to make it back to safety. But the company offers this assurance. Your journey will be closely tracked by Black Tomato. Some of our staff will always be able to see you, but you will never see them. Are you ready to sign up for that kind of vacation this morning? It would take a certain amount of courage to take a trip like that. And most of us like to have at least a little bit of control when we're on our way. Some would say, though, that Jesus is taking his disciples then as he takes his disciples today on a good love tour, inviting them for a trip of their life, trusting that he'll be there somewhere, listening and knowing what's going on. He'll be saying, get on board. I'll watch. The ultimate destination will be heaven. Our passage from the scripture today as we read has Jesus saying, leaving that place, he withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Those are Gentile towns and they're some 50 miles away from where Jesus was last seen. There's no real explanation as to why he's there. But as we read, there is this Canaanite woman from that vicinity who calls out to him, Son of David, Lord, have mercy on me. 
My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Did Jesus travel those 50 miles just to minister to this distraught mother? Maybe. But when he's finished here, he simply goes back to the area of ministry where he had been near the Sea of Galilee. So it appears the only reason he went there was to minister to this woman. And again, she's not just any woman. In that day, a Jewish man would not speak to a woman outside his own family in public. And especially not a Canaanite because they were considered the enemy. But this woman has her desperate request. And at first, Jesus didn't even answer her. The disciples weren't much help. They said, just send her away. She's crying after us. So sometime later, we're not sure how long, Jesus said to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But notice, she does not give up. Lord, help me. Jesus said, then it's not right to take the children's bread and to toss it to the dogs. And she is one great woman, I think, when she says, yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus commends her for her great faith. She's desperate. And we know the phrase that we have been raised with, that desperate times call for desperate measures. But there is a more helpful phrase. And that is that desperate times call for Jesus. And hopefully you have found that in your life as I have found it in mine. This woman is desperate. But her desperation doesn't disqualify her from having great faith. Neither does her gender, which would have disqualified her in that day. And neither her social status. All that's required, even today, is a willingness to bring your desperate need to Jesus. It's interesting that this woman is not of the Jewish faith, but she addresses Jesus as Lord. Even his disciples at this time weren't making that claim. But this foreigner recognizes him for who he is. She knows he has power in his hand. She, he has powers of life. And somehow she seems to know that he is her only hope. Many of us have been at a similar point in our life, have we not? There's a best-selling author, Anne Lamott, that says, My prayer every morning is, help me, help me. Help me, Lord. And my prayer every night is thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. And she writes that sometimes in between those two prayers, I say throughout the day a wow prayer. Because suddenly I become aware that God is working at that moment in my life. Help me is a legitimate prayer, isn't it? And sometimes it's the only prayer that we can manage. We've been in a place like that, have we not? And we need to learn, uh, as this Canaanite woman did, and we need to follow her example, because in her desperation, she brought her name to Jesus. Desperate times call for Jesus. This woman is a mother. Her first request is that the Lord would have mercy on her. She knew that mercy is an essential part of God's character. She knows, I have no right to approach Jesus. But I also know that mercy is just who God is. And I know He can meet my daughter's needs. Even as Jesus is silent, trying to, to turn her away. She kneels at his feet in worship because she knows he is Lord and she could count on his mercy just as you and I can. 
I read also that Dr. Keith Grantley served as a medical missionary in Liberia, West Africa. In 2014, the Ebola virus swept through that country. In the course of 21 months, more than 11,000 people died from that virus. No one was saved. Even healthy people died within a couple of days after they were infected. So imagine Dr. Brantley's fear when he began to, to manifest some of the symptoms in that disease. He said, I put myself on immediate quarantine. My colleagues couldn't come near me. My family was back in the States, and I had to deal with this and deal with all my fear alone. So he says, I picked up my Bible, I took my desperation to the Lord, and I found comfort in a verse in Scripture. It was Hebrews 4.16. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. He said that verse became his prayer focus. Over the next couple of days, his pain increased, his nausea increased. And when the test confirmed that he had contracted the virus, he said, I finally called my wife in Texas and told her what was going on. His wife's name was Amber, and Amber said, in fear and in sadness, with my husband being so far away, I found it difficult to find any words to pray. So instead, I began to sing. And I began to sing some of the hymns of trust, praising God in spite of the situation and not knowing how it was going to end. They took their needs to Jesus in different ways, each one trusting God's mercy and love. No matter what the answer and ultimate outcome, out outcome would be, Dr. Brentley's colleagues arranged to have him flown to Atlanta for some experimental treatment for the virus. Within a few days, his condition began to improve and God mercifully answered their prayers. Where in a short time, he was able to walk out of the hospital, a survivor of that virus. Of course, you and I know not everyone who trusts Jesus and suffers a serious disease always walks out of the hospital cure. <clears throat> the believer, though, if they don't, walks into the arms of Jesus with a new perfect, whole body at last. Jesus compliments this Canaanite woman for her great faith. <clears throat> and that great faith here is pretty simple. Bring your desperate need to Him. Trust in God's love. The God who <clears throat> gave up His power and majesty and ultimately His life to save us from the power of sin and death. He loves you. And He loves me so much that He will never turn us away. Desperate times don't always call for desperate measures, but they always call for Jesus. Many of you, like myself, could take the rest of the day telling about the times that we had a desperate need that we had to face. We, like this woman, could tell that that desperate need turned us to Jesus. Some people, as we know, that we prayed for were temporarily healed. Some are totally healed now and live. One day, we as believers will be able to see them again. So the best advice for you and for me is to remember that desperate times call for Jesus. And as we have faced them in the past, we know that we will have to face them in the future. And we can turn to Him. Things don't always turn out exactly the way we would like them to turn out. But we always know that He knows. His will is perfect. And He's asking us to trust Him. So the question is, can you do that? I pray that you can. Let's pray again. Father, we're thankful that we are never alone. 
that you are always there watching over us and caring about us and caring for us. We pray today that we would continue to know and to learn that desperate times call for you. And you will meet our need. And you'll meet it.